Siri Walton, Clifford Jordan Quartet, som er cirka tre år gammel, består av følgende musikere. Trommeslageren Billy Higgins, som er født i Kalifornia 1937. Han tilhørte kretsen av avantgarde-musikere som på 1960-tallet banet nye veier for jassen. Mest kjent er han for sitt samarbeid med Ornette Coleman og Don Cherry. Samtidig spilte han med musikere som Thelonious Monk, Farrell Sanders, John Coltrane, Sonny Rollins og Wayne Shorter, og var en tid med i den faste rytmegruppen på platemerket Blue Note. Bassisten Sam Jones er 50 år gammel og født i Florida. Han spilte blant andre med Dizzy Gillespie og Thelonious Monk, før han i første halvdel av 60-tallet var med i Campbell Adleys gruppe. I 1966 erstattet han så Ray Brown som bassist i Oscar Petersens trio. På piano finner vi 40 år gamle Cedar Walton fra Texas. Han har siden slutten av 50-tallet tilhørt første klasse av bobpianister. Og blant musikere han har spilt med nevner vi J.J. Johnson, Art Farmer, Benny Golson, Freddy Hubbard og Milt Jackson, foruten to perioder med Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers. Han har ledet flere egne grupper og en tid tilhørt huskompe på platemerket Prestige. Han har også gjort seg bemerket som komponist. Endelig har vi gruppens tenorist Clifford Jordan. Han er et produkt av musikkmiljøet i Chicago, der han ble født 1931. Han har, som de øvrige i gruppen, spilt med en lang rekke toppmusikere i USA, som Horace Silver, Max Roach og J.J. Johnson, men er vel mest kjent for sin innsats med Charlie Mingus. Ved siden av arrangering og komponering har Clifford Jordan drevet en utstrakt pedagogisk virksomhet i USA.
Have you been through the avant-garde thing that um, Billy Higgins went through in the mid-60s? I mean, with Honored Coleman, for example. Have I been through it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, know, been through it. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have any experiences with avant-garde? Well, I went through Oslo. Yeah. <laughs> 69, is that, is that avant-garde? Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, um, I don't know much about that. You uh -huh. know. Those terms, you, you usually they're just, they're just words. Yeah, I just words. I know, mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. But I mean, they have for some people some meaning. When I right. say oh my God, I, yeah, they said oh, I know oh, what you mean. But at the same time, it's so uh, unrelated uh, in the professional life of a musician, or avant garde, among other mm -hmm. ways of thinking, are very uh, prominent in uh, say press things and uh, uh, criticisms, uh, written criticisms. There's uh, there have always been. Uh, words similar to that mm -hmm. in my thinking and uh, I uh, personally uh, haven't had a chance to uh, assimilate uh, any feelings one way or the other about these things being involved in uh, the, the, the uh, actual profession of earning a living a livelihood through music if it's avant God if I'm capable if if somebody I've never been criticized for not playing it or playing it you know so I really can't relate to it in that sense let me put the question another way. Um, do you think that music is a universal language? Well, Mr. Jordan, you've been to Africa, for example. I know. Yes. Um, I feel it's a universal language. You, yes. Mm -hmm. You can communicate with jazz music all over. Uh, well, I think you can communicate with any music all over. Good music is really what it is. Right. In any type. If it's good, you listen to it.
Mr. Walton, in what way do you feel that your style differ from that, um, differs from that of any other piano player? What, what's the reason that you are playing the way you are? Well, well as a young person, I right away I always have been influenced by recorded music. You know, I, I'm, I've become almost an expert on the re, on recorded music from way back. You know, collect, and, and I'm not even a collector. I, you know, I don't own the records, but I know of the existence of the records, like many of us do. I'm, I own some records, but. Uh, all recorded, uh, especially the piano uh, recorded works, including Art Tatum, uh, Nat Cole, uh, all throughout that era, Fats Waller, Ray Charles, uh, Duke Ellington, Bud Powell, Armin Jamal, all these people have influenced me. I still get, gain a great deal of uh, uh, insight into the keyboard. I'm still trying to accomplish this to that. And, and, and as far as uh, precise answer to your question. I'm not aware of any difference in my playing, conscious of it. I'm not conscious of it. People tell me I sound like myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is that but, uh, to be with touch, for example, your special touch? A, a special touch. I, I took me a long time to try to develop a, a heavier touch. I know my mother was one of my first teachers, and I think through her uh, feminine side. I, I never learned to play very loud until I got with Art Blakey. <laughs> then I had to play real loud. I had to play stronger. I developed a strength that I didn't have before. And I think if any one thing could be attributed to uh, my style, it would be that from playing in bands with, with uh, more volume you know, as compared with just playing strong. I never would have played strong on my own without being involved with uh, old jazz bands with trumpets and drums and things. So that gave some strength to my playing uh, when I was, uh, and then uh, uh, again, left alone to my own devices, I've discovered I had become stronger. But I don't know what, I'm sure my touch might have, may or may not have been affected. I don't, I'm just not conscious of it. Do you have any, Mr. Jordan, any opinion on what may have influenced your uh, playing style? Uh, yes, I know um, exactly how it happened. And uh, well, the first thing, I, I saw a man carrying a saxophone case down the street. And uh, pretty soon I found out what was in the case. And I heard records. I listened to music as a child. As a baby, I played records. So um, it's been in me all the time. I was influenced mainly on the saxophone by uh, Lester Young, who was the first influence, and uh, Charlie Parker. And, uh, from there, I devised my own method. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
where, where will jazz music go from here? You know? <laughs> yeah, Trondheim. It's going to Trondheim. Good. I don't mean any to, to sort of be <laughs> prophets or anything, but <laughs> I mean, your, your uh, personal opinions on that. I mean, what will happen to jazz? It goes Do exactly you know? where the artist takes it. it it's, uh, it's like you say, it's a prophecy beyond reality. We could, we could uh, attempt to uh, predict where it's going, but it would be useless because it, uh, it's never yet going where we thought it would. <laughs> where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go. I want to uh, improve on my instrument and in my thinking, and, and be able to. Uh, I have all my uh, endeavors uh, positive, you know, including especially my playing, and then my composing in that order, and my performance, my recording, all these things. Uh, I'm beginning to uh, see a crystallization after many years of effort. You know. And you, Mr. Jordan? Well. Uh, you want to know where jazz is going for me? No, yeah, yeah, for you, for you personally. Yeah. Well, uh, I plan to play for about another seven years, and then I want to retire and dig in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. You're welcome.